And this is it. Zip. Density for the year. We're done. All right. Two day topic. Uh, the problems are going to get significantly tougher. So enjoy these while you can and hopefully you pick it up today. A uh, couple things. Uh, density. I kind of lied yesterday when I said the surface area of the sphere would be the only formula you'll need to remember that's not on the formula sheet. I guess density would be the second one then. All right. Mass divided by the volume. That's why it's in this unit because you need the volume of an object to find its density. Uh, also, I'd like you to just take a look how I leave the units for density. This is just examples. Grams per centimeters cubed. How do I know that's going to be density? Grams is a form of mass divided by anything cubed is a form of volume. All right, so that's how I would leave my units. Or if you're reading a problem and you see mass divided by volume, it's going to be the density. Right below this sheet, and I don't want you to look at go ahead and waste time looking at it but that part right there is at the top of your formula sheet not today but starting tomorrow you're going to have to convert units like maybe an object's in inches but it needs to be in centimeters and how the heck do i do that all right any any conversion you need will be here or i will give it to you the only thing you are on the hook for and i don't think this is a big deal asking honors kids to do this but 12 inches equals a foot we okay with that? You're not going to find that here, and I probably won't give it to you. But anything else, you will be provided on the formula sheet, or I'll give it to you in the problem. All right? So but we'll worry about converting tomorrow. I think today is everything is in the units it should be. All right, so let's jump right into a density problem so you can see what the heck we're talking about. There we go. All right, we got a wooden cube. It's made of a certain type of wood. I need you to help me define what type of wood that is. Here's what you know. One edge, every edge, because it's a cube, six centimeters, the mass of it, 137.8 grams. What's the density of this cube? So let's start there before we determine what type of wood we're using. So we just had the formula for you. Density equals mass over volume. And this is just kind of a straight plug and chug problem to get the idea. The mass was just given to us. Get my notes out. Uh, 137.8. And be prepared for this. You're going to be on the hook to find the volume. That's why we're in this unit now. This is a cube. So I could use, cube is also another name for a square prism. So you could use the prism formula. What numbers am I going to multiply together to find the volume of this cube? Start us off right, 22. Stop. Stop. Right there. That's B of BH. And then times, which is the height. So I'm still using BH, just they all happen to be the same. So my volume, 216, what are we in here? Centimeters cubed. All right, I plug it in. 216 down here. And you guys can read the rounding directions. What is my density going to be here of this cube? Density, nearest thousandth. Oh, 14, nearest thousandth. Is this one? What's up? Good job. If we were putting units on, mass, which was what? Grams per volume centimeters cubed, if you guys that attach units are going to do it. And then I'm not going to ask anybody this question. Just read the darn chart. It must have been made out of ash. Okay. We're solid there. Just finding density, because now I'll pick it up a little bit. All right, let's go to a shipping container now. It's a prism, it's a rectangular prism, there's the dimensions. And when it's completely filled, everything inside weighs on average 0.25 pounds per cubic foot. What's the weight of the whole container now? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I do not mention the word density at all. And I probably won't on future problems. You won't see the word density. How do I know that that 0.25 is the density? How do I know that's the density overall here? That's going to be my D, density. 
Troy Claire. Pounds, which is a form of what? Mass per cubic foot, which is a form of volume. Does everyone see that? Oh, oh, the label tells you that it's the density. All right, I don't need the darn vocabulary term. All right, the label tells you that that's the density. All right, so let's go to work. D equals M over V. We just discussed 0.25 is my density. You're looking for the weight in pounds. There's my mass. All right, here we go. Off to the side. Help me find the volume here of this rectangular container, prism container. Uh, what are we multiplying here? 11? Uh, 12 by 8.5. Stop. All right, everybody, that's capital B. Again, I'm just using my formula sheet. And then the height, Brody? Uh, four. Four. There you go. So I find the volume. What's that bad boy? 100? Nope, that's the answer. 408. I plug it in. And we're okay solving this at this point. Cross multiply or multiply both sides by 108 or 408. Uh, what's the mass of this bad boy container? 17? 100 and? Two, yep, pounds, LBs as we say in the streets. All good? Not too bad. All right, keep trucking. Ah, oh, the good old American white oak. What a classic. 752 kilograms per cubic meter. What's that right there? 752. What did I just give you? Density. Density. Again, why? Kilograms, mass per cubic meter, volume. And I just, and it says the word density, so you're welcome. Ooh, oh, I'm giving you the circumference is 4.5 and the height of the trunk is 8. How much does that bad boy weigh? Oh, yeah. All right, honors kids. Here we go. Buckle up. We just said the density was 752 mass. And then here we go with volume. What shape is this trunk taking? 18. That is a cylinder. Look on the darn formula sheet. Don't guess. Pi r squared times the height. Ooh, I still run into another problem. I don't know the radius of this trunk. I only know the height is eight. But then it gives me what other fact? What else do I know about this trunk? 11? Oh, uh, the circumference. Ooh, circumference, yeah. And I don't do this enough, but that's on your formula sheet too, by the way. If you ever blank on the circumference formula, it doesn't say circumference, it says circle. And it gives you the area under one and circumference under the other. You're welcome. There you go. So you don't even have to remember that one. What is the circumference formula we use? 25? Pi D. Pi D. I plug in 4.5 for the circumference. And let's find the diameter so I can get to the radius. How do I solve for the diameter here? Uh, 10, solving for the diameter. Divide by pi. Divide by pi because it does not cancel out in this case. And yeah, this sounds like a broken record because you can't do this on the regions. I'm not rounding. Diameter is not going to give me the mass of the trunk. So let's write it all out here. 1.4323947. Three, four, four, eight, eight. Go ahead and cut it in half and you get your radius. Point seven one six one Boom, there's my radius squared, remember, squared. Find the volume, don't round it. Plug it back into your density formula. So everyone should have a volume of 12 point change here, eight, nine, one, five, five, zero, three, nine. And it says approximate, right? So to me, that's nearest whole number here. So 
So when you're ready, nearest whole number, how long, how big, how much does this trunk weigh? 20! 9,000. Use your big boy numbers. 6,094. You're an honors. You're not telling me a telephone number. Any issues? And I think that's where I got to. Yep. That's where we're stopping for. And that's where I stopped last period too. Because the rest of the notes is the homework. It's not like extra pages. All right. Uh, go to number nine though. Just so I can warn you about number nine. I'm giving you a little taste, a little sniff of what we're getting into tomorrow with number nine. All right. Please. It's, it's going to be a little tough one. I just want you to realize part A, the, what's the volume of 100 candles? All right. Figure it out. Part B, though, there's two questions in part B. I want you to realize that there's two questions. First question is, how much will it cost to buy the wax for 100 candles? That's the question one. And question two is, what's his profit? And I give you a little hint on what profit is down here so you can find it. So be careful. Part B, two questions. All right. So get as much done as you can before the uh, PA comes on and says, we got to go to this uh, Assembly. And I think tomorrow, yeah, we'll do the duel in the back of the room tomorrow. And that leaves Thursday for two people, two more people to get voted out. Yes. Uh, 